Today we talk about Kingdom Animalia. This is our last kingdom of our classification system to discuss in biology. Kingdom Animalia has a variety of characteristics that um, make this kingdom very diverse. So one characteristic that we begin with is all animals in here are going to be heterotroph. So there are no organisms in Kingdom Animalia that make their own food. So they cannot produce their own food. Also, mobility. So organisms in Kingdom Animalia have the ability to move. So either they swim, crawl, walk, run, some even fly. Multicellularity is the next one. So some are really, really microscopic, but even at that, they all have more than one cell. Being diploid is another characteristic. So remember diploid, diploidy? They all have two sets of chromosomes. Very, very few exceptions to those rules. So a little bit more characteristics. So se uh, excuse me, sexual reproduction is another characteristic of ke uh, kingdom animalia. So there are exceptions to these rules, but most, for the most part, uh, sexual reproduction is occurring in kingdom animalia. Absence of a cell wall. Absolutely nobody in kingdom animalia, no, no organism in kingdom animalia has a cell wall. Uh, blastula formation. A blastula is going to be a hollow ball of cells. And the, this hollow ball of cells occurs during embryonic development. That is characteristic to kingdom animalia. And also having tissues. So all cells, except for sponges, sponges are the only exception to the rule, all of those have cells that are organized into tissue. Symmetry is something that we need to talk about. Uh, it's a good way to start categorizing organisms. So if, if an organism has radial symmetry, its appendages are arranged around the central axes, like this starfish up here on the top right. Bilateral symmetry is the, is the other type of symmetry that we talk about. So bi means two. So we would be talking about having mirror images of each other on either side of this organism, like the moth on the right-hand side. So our first um, type of simple animals to talk about and, and again, these are simple because they are invertebrates. Today's topic all about invertebrates, organisms that do not have a backbone. So we're going to be talking about sponges, cnidarians, flatworms, and roundworms. So sponges fall under the phylum periphera. So these guys are the simplest animals out there. It's weird, I know, they don't look like animals, but they are. So they contain a skeleton of spicules made out of silica or calcium carbonate. So instead of tissue, these guys do not have tissue. They have this, uh, this little skeleton, if you will, made out of silica. So these guys, depending upon the species, can reproduce sexually or asexually. We have cool little examples here. On the top left-hand side, we have the um, elephant ear sponge. We have a basket, tub, or barrel sponge on the top right. And down below, we have the yellow tube sponge. Cnidarians are our next topic to cover. So cnidarians, these guys um, have two forms. They can either be medusa, as in they're mobile, or a polyp, they are attached. So these guys do have tissue. So this is something new. They are formed out of tissue. They have cells made out of tissue. And excuse me, all together make tissue. So examples would be hydrozoans, scyphozoans, and anthozoans. And we'll take a look at a couple of examples here. So we have a picture of a hydra, of a jellyfish, and a sea anemone. We have a boxfish jelly, another hydra, and some coral. Next up, we have the platyhelminths and nematodes, or the more common names, flatworms and roundworms. So the cool thing about these guys is now, in addition to tissue, we're adding in cephalization. That's another characteristic. So cephal means head, so it is the beginning of a head region. So flatworms can be parasitic or free-living, and roundworms, they do have a pseudo -coelum. So pseudo means partial or false, so uh, coelum is going to be a body cavity. So these guys are starting to become a little bit more complex. They can parasitize plants, animals, and they are that common worm infection in dogs and in humans too. So here are some examples. We have uh, fresh water flatworms, marine flatworms, and round worms. Moving right along to mollusks and annelids. So these guys, uh, we have snails, squids, uh, squid, excuse me, clams, marine worms, and earthworms. So mollusks, yes, we have Gary the snail here. Why? Because mollusks usually have that shell on top of them. So these guys uh, exhibit bilateral symmetry. They do have organ systems. Many of them have that shell that we just finished talking about. And uh, here are the types of classes. So we have gastropods, bivalves, and cephalopods. So the gastropod is the first one that we talk about. So the gastropod is going to, gastro means stomach and pod means foot. So these guys, um, 
essentially have a stomach foot. So we have snails and slugs here. So we have uh, marine, freshwater, and terrestrial examples. Bivalves come next, and bi means two, and valve is referring to the shells. So we, in this category, we have oysters, clams, scallops, and muzzles. And um, they have two shells held closed with two thick muscles. Clams, scallops, zebra mussels, and oysters are all examples of bivalves. Cephalopods come next. Ceph cephal refers to head, and pod means foot. So here we have uh, Squidward, as funny as it is, but he is definitely a cephalopod. They are the most uh, intelligent of the invertebrates. They do have a brain. So most of the body is a large head attached to tentacles. And these examples are going to be squid, octopi, cuttlefish, and nautilus. So this is a good picture of squid. So we definitely see that they have the big head and then the, um, the tentacles attached to there. Next up, we have the cuttlefish. Then on the top right, we have the Pacific giant octopus. On the bottom left, we have the blue ringed octopus. And then we have the nautilus here. Next up, we have annelids. So annelids are the first segment in animals that we have. They absolutely have a true coelom or a true body cavity. They have a very primitive brain, these guys. And examples include marine worms, earthworms, and leeches. So again, some cool pictures. We have marine worms, uh, Christmas tree worms. They look pretty cool. Uh, we have the leech and then the earthworms. Moving right along to arthropods and econoderms. So features of some arthropods are going to be the fact that they have a seal, and so they have that true body cavity. They have jointed appendages. They have a segmented body. And now what we're adding today, or in this slide, are we're adding exoskeleton. Exo means outside, so they have a hard outer skeleton. They molt, which means that they shed their skeleton as they grow larger. And examples might be insects, spiders, scorpions, crustaceans, like shrimp, lobster, and zooplankton. And here are some examples, some real life examples of insects. So we have the velvet ant on the top left. We have a walking stick on the top right. The damselfly on the bottom right. And then the grasshopper on the bottom left. Spiders and scorpions also fall into this category. So we have the black widow, a regular scorpion, and I do believe that's a goliath spider. Moving right along to crustaceans. So crustaceans, we have this mantis shrimp a peppermint shrimp, and then um, on the top right, excuse me, we have the regular lobster. Down at the bottom right, we have the Daphnia, bottom middle, a hermit crab, and in the bottom left, we have the copepod. Starfish also fall into this category on the top left, as well as the feather star on the top right, and then the brittle star on the top, on the bottom, uh, bottom section. Also under econoderms, we have the sea urchin, the sand dollar, and then the sea cucumber. And that was all for invertebrates. So very, very complex organisms. However, not having a backbone is their um, main characteristic.